five more excellent actionable tips to keep your photography developing in 2022. Hi and welcome to episode 133 of the Photography Explained podcast. I'm your host Rick and in each episode I will try to explain one photographic thing to you in plain English in less than 10 minutes-ish without the irrelevant details. What I tell you is based on my lifetime of photographic experience and not Google. No, no Google in this episode. Right, let's get straight into this. Here is the answer a bit. 1. Try auto bracketing and put the photos together in whatever editing software you use. Or 2. Deliberately underexpose and overexpose photos. Open brackets and see what you get. Close brackets. 3. Take the same photo with different apertures, but the correct exposure. 4. Take the same photo with different shutter speeds, but the correct exposure. 5. Try long exposure. Yes, these are all related to taking photos, but varying how you take the photos using different camera settings. And there is a a logical end point to this, which takes us into the next episode rather cunningly. (laughs) Yep, keep your photography developing. See what I did there? Yep, back in the day when I was a whippersnapper. Need to point out here that um, Microsoft Word, it identified whippersnapper as um, a not inclusive term, would you believe? So... As I'm talking about me, it's fine. Thought that was interesting. So, yes, back in the day when I was a whippersnapper, I used to take the film to a shop and get the photos developed. That or I developed them at home, and quite badly at that. There were a couple of other things I wanted to mention, but they didn't really fit in, and I'm trying to make things all hang together, believe it or not. So one of them was, um, take a photo of something you've never taken a photo of before. And the other one was give black and white a go. Now, these are possibly ones for another time, I guess. I mean... It's a never-ending thing, this podcast. Every time I write an episode, another two or three episodes appear like a rabbit out of a hat. Which is good when you're trying to create new material, isn't it? One more thing, a tripod will help here. But if you don't have one, just do these things anyway. In fact, if you do have a tripod, do these things with the tripod and do these things without the tripod. You'll know what I mean when we get to the end. Okay, then back to these five things. First one. Try auto bracketing and put the photos together in whatever editing software you use. Now, I hope there's no strange sound there because I just hit my microphone rather helpfully. See, this is what I do for my architectural real estate and construction photography. This is how I work. This is what I do all the time. And I want you to try. So why do I do this? Well, simple. And the work I do is a great way of explaining this simply and so you can understand it. Because auto bracketing, it sounds like quite a scary thing, but I'm going to break it down so it doesn't. Right, so I'm taking a photo of a room, and in the room there's a window, which is light because it's a nice bright sunny day. So if I take a photo of the room using what the camera tells me to, the window will be overexposed. Now the shadows in the room, they'll be too dark as well, they'll be underexposed, but the bits in the middle will be fine. So what I do is I take three photos, one for the light bits, the window, one for the dark bits, the shadows, plus the one I was going to take anyway for the rest of the room. I merge them together in Lightroom. Now in Lightroom, this is called HDR Merge. Now you say that you use HDR and you're opening opening yourself up to all sorts of criticism. But if you say you're taking photos using auto bracketing, it makes you sound like a knowledgeable photographer, doesn't it? You're doing a very good technical job. HDR bad, auto bracketing good. They're actually the same, believe it or not. Hmm. So give it a go, see how you get on. Now, the room example I give you, because it's, it's a, one that we can all understand, because we've, <laughs> we've all been in a room, haven't we? And I hope we've all been in a room with a window. <laughs> yeah, that's the point of this. And two stops under... Well, no, I'll get onto that in a minute. Don't spoil it, Rick. Next one is deliberately underexpose and overexpose photos. Open brackets and see what you get. Close brackets. Yeah, play around with the exposure. Take photos with the correct exposure. And then take the same photo, but change the aperture or shutter to deliberately underexpose the photo. Do the same and then then overexpose the photo. Now, you could do whatever you wanted to. I suggest you try two stops and try four stops. Have a look at what you got and this this will, it'll help you learn about exposure. Now, the four stop ones, they're probably rubbish, but there might be something there that you can use. And the two stop photos... This is the cunning bit here. That'll show you what the camera can capture two stops either side of the correct exposure. Yep, that's what I do when I auto bracket. I take three photos, one the correct exposure, one two stops overexposed, one two stops underexposed. And in general terms, when you're photographing an interior of a property using my camera and the way I take photos, it works every time. 
I get enough of the detail in the shadows and I get enough of the detail in the highlights, a.k.a. the window. You don't want to get too much. You don't want everything to look the same. You still need contrast. You need the range of lights and darks, but you need the information in the window. Probably delving into the talky bit part here, so I'm going to go back to my script. Yeah, that's the point. When you take a photo with the correct exposure, you're missing stuff beyond what you have captured in the lights and the darks. That didn't make sense, did it? When you take a photo with the correct exposure, you are missing stuff beyond what you have captured in the lights and the darks. No, that did make sense. It was just me being stupid. And with these photos, you can see what that stuff is. And that's the beauty of this. Okay, so next one. Take the same photo with different apertures. Open brackets, but the correct exposure. Close brackets. This is more playing with the camera. Start wide open, whatever the maximum aperture is. Now, that's the largest opening. And you can't see the aperture when you take a photo or try the depth of field preview button if you have one. So this is the aperture that's letting the maximum amount of light in. Take a photo, then work through the aperture scale until you're at the minimum aperture, which is the smallest opening letting the least light in. Yep, I know there'll be some fiddling around with the shutter speed and the ISO to get the exposure correct, but it's worth it. Again, see what you get. Look at the photos and compare them. What's sharp in the photo and what isn't? Next one, take the same photo with different shutter speeds, but the correct exposure. So start with the correct exposure and an average shutter speed, say, I don't know, 1 125th of a second. Then go up the shutter speed scale using faster and faster shutter speeds. And then go the other way using slower and slower shutter speeds. If you don't have a tripod, try to keep your camera as still as you can. And you'll see the point of that when you look at the photos, because you'll see the point at which they start to get blurry when you're taking them handheld, which, which is actually dead handy for you to know. These five things are giving you massive amounts of learning in taking photos and exposure and the capabilities of a camera and the vari- variables of the different settings. So this is, this is dead handy stuff I'm telling you. I nearly said believe me then, but I've stopped myself, thankfully. The last point was try a long exposure. Now, if you don't have a tripod, just put your camera on a wall, put it on a table, whatever. Just get your camera sat somewhere where it won't move. I've used all sorts of things to make sure my camera doesn't move. I mean, I'm talking pebbles on a beach, sticks and twigs in a forest, anything. All that matters is that your camera's not moving, not that you camera is not moving. Good English, Rick. Good English. I'm just going to change that now. There you go. I just corrected that and continued recording. I'm getting good at this, aren't I? Use a self-timer built into the camera and take a photo with the longest shutter speed that you can get a correct exposure for. Now, if you can't get a long enough exposure, you need to come back to my podcast next week where I've got you covered with where I tell you about sunglasses for camera lenses. (laughs) Well, it made me laugh anyway. As to what you take your photos of, don't mind really. Just take photos of stuff that you like to take photos of and see what you get. And there's a reason for that as well. Right, the talky bit. Yeah, believe it or not, that was the answer. (laughs) The point of this is to experiment with your camera and the various settings that you can change. So try all these things and see what happens when you get the exposure wrong, what you don't get, but also what you do get that you wouldn't have got with the correct exposure. I can't believe I got that right first time, if that makes sense. And yes, it did, surprisingly. And also you'll begin to see what changing the aperture and the shutter speed do. Not that. You wouldn't think I've been through this script quite a few times, would you? (laughs) See, I prefer to learn about this stuff with photos that I've taken myself and that I can analyse myself. As far as I'm concerned, this is an excellent way to develop your photography skills. And that is what this is all about, isn't it? Yeah, it really is by using different and in many cases incorrect camera settings. Amazing what you find out when you do things wrong. Not everything's perfect all the time. So this is valuable learning. And this doesn't cost you anything, assuming you're shooting digital. And you can do this whenever and wherever you like with whatever subjects you like. You can do it as many times as you like, entirely up to you. And it also proves that not having a tripod does not have to be a barrier. There are other ways. If you've never tried this before, you can try improvising. There's nothing wrong with putting your camera on a table and using the self-timer. No, not technically brilliant. Your camera might move a little bit, but you need to learn how to get around these things like not having a tripod. I mean, I've taken photos in pitch darkness i just put my camera on a harbour wall and they've been fine so have a go and see what happens when you have a go at these things before i forget did you try any of the things i suggested in episode 110 that was 10 actionable tips to improve your photography in 2022 that kind of thing 
if you did, let me know you got on. Now, a few of the, a few of the things I raised there, they, they had a similar theme. Get out more and take photos. Learn composition. Learn your camera properly. Learn how to use your camera. Take time taking photos. Get out more but take less photos. Less is more. Get a critique. Really look at your photos and learn what you've done. And enjoy photography. Now, it's all good stuff. And, and what I'm telling you here is it's different different aspects of photography which we're, we're trying to improve on. So this one was about things that you can change in your camera and what happens when you do it. Give these things a go. Try new things. See what you can create. Okay? What do I do? Well, I've done all this good stuff myself over many years and I still have... I still have a play from time to time. When I did this, it helped me to understand what was going on. It made it helped me to really understand, give me that proper understanding. Because I'm one of those people. If I read something, it doesn't necessarily. I don't necessarily understand from it. But if I do something myself, that that's how I learn. It's just what I do. Maybe it's because I'm a bit. I don't know. Not great at learning. (laughs) Bit harsh, but probably true. So, yeah, that's how I learn by doing. So if this works for you, give it a try and and let me know you get on. Love to hear from you. Okay, next episode. Well, last point I mentioned was long exposures. And if you're trying to do that long exposure thing and you can't because it's not dark enough, then you need some gear. Photography Explained Podcast, episode 134. ND filters. What are they? What do they do? Do I need one? Yep, a very specific gear-related question which came out of one of the points in this episode. See, more seamless progression of subject matters. How splendid. Okay, if you have a photography question you'd like me to answer, in plain English, in less than 10 minutes-ish, without the relevant details, just head over to photographerexplainedpodcast.com forward slash start. And you can also find out more about me and my podcast and also ways to help me. I'd love to hear from you, even if it's just to say hi. Okay, this episode was powered by, wait for it. Oh no, oh no, I haven't updated this. <laughs> if you're wondering why I say this, I, I, I'm not really sure. I just started doing it because um, I thought I'd get somebody, some sponsor saying this episode was powered by XYZ products and they pay me a vast amount of money to say it, but it hasn't quite worked out like that. So I just thought I'd tell you what I've been eating. Why not? It's my podcast. This episode was powered by a cheese and pickle sandwich with a bag of salt and vinegar crisps or washed down nicer with an ice cold Diet Pepsi, which I'm now post-consumption of, sat here in my very warm, homemade, acoustically cushioned recording emporium. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much to listen. (laughs) I was just about to say I've done well this episode and I got the last line wrong. I can't believe it. I'm keeping that in. I've been Rick McAvoy. Thanks again very much for listening to my small but perfectly formed podcast, it says here, and for giving me 10-ish minutes of your valuable time, more like 12 probably. Take care, stay safe. Cheers from me, Rick.